Last week we left you on a bit of a co-hanger. <laughs> cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. I always get them two mixed up, like Pep Guardiola and Gaviscon. Well, they're both like antacids, aren't they? You're bizarre. No? Well, I think they are anyway. The cure excess wind, let's put it that way. <laughs> We're at Sutton Weaver, which is where we left you last week on the coat hanger. By the Dan hanger. By cliffhanger by the Daniel Adamson <laughs> steamship Danny. If you didn't see that episode, check it out, it's brilliant. And we've got a guest boat joining us today for we our have. journey. Train. But where are we going? Oh. Well, if you read the title, you probably already know that we're going to Liverpool and we're going to cross the River Mersey. Yay! Now today's journey has taken more planning than the Tidal Thames trip did last year. Oh yes. Let me walk you through it a little bit. From Sutton Weaver, it's two miles to Marsh Lock, which is where we drop down onto the Manchester Ship Canal. Then we've got a 10 mile journey down to Eastern Lock, where we drop down onto the River Mersey. Then we've got a five mile crossing of the Mersey at its widest point, it's about two and a half, three miles wide, to Brunswick Lock at Liverpool. That takes us into Liverpool docks, and then we've got another mile up to Salthouse Dock, which is hopefully, by the end of today, where we're gonna be moored. It better be. <laughs> now, I said it's taken a lot of planning. We've had to get a certificate of seaworthiness yes. for Silver Fox, and we've got an independent surveyor that's approved by Peel Holdings, because we need that to go on the Manchester Ship Canal. Then we had to get the engine serviced and checked to make sure that it's in good condition for the journey. Then we had to arrange the canal and river trust to open marsh lock at the end of the navigation to get us down onto the ship canal. We had to book that in advance. I know. Then we had to get a license from Peel Holdings to go on the Manchester ship canal, which cost us about 70 odd quid and some application forms, which we've done. Yeah. Then we have to arrange a booking to get through Eastern lock because it's massive as you'll see in a little bit. <laughs> Then we have to arrange Brunswick Lock, which takes us off the Mersey onto Liverpool docks. Now we've got to get there within 90 minutes of high water, otherwise we won't get in. Oh my God. That'll be fun. Oh, we've got somebody to help oh, us Oh, we'll though. just turn around and come back. <laughs> and then we have to book a berth, a pontoon, at Salt House Dock where we can stay for a few days. Yeah. On top of that, we've had to get some new ropes and make sure that everything's ship shape and Bristol fashion. Sorry, I'm being attacked. Hitting me. Or Liverpool fashion. <laughs> we've had to get our anchor out. Yes. Which is only the third time we've had to do that. Are you nervous? No, because we've got a pilot. I need to go change my pants. Joining us today on our trip across the Mersey is Fran and Rich from YouTube channel Floating Our Boat. We've done all the final checks and Stuart, our pilots, briefed us on what to expect during the crossing. First stop is Marsh Lock. George from the Canal and River Trust is waiting with the lock gates open ready for us. Marsh Lock is the last lock on the Weaver navigation before the Manchester Ship Canal and it protects the navigation from any changes to the water level in the canal. Today there's only a two foot drop down and that means that we're out on time. Even though the ship canal is kept at a pretty constant level, there's a few safeguards in place just in case the water level does get too high. The Weaver sluices were built at the same time as the ship canal back in the 1890s, and they're made up of 10 gates, and each one allows water to flow out of the canal and down into the Mersey estuary. Here we are on the Manchester Ship Canal. We've just come out of Marsh Lock. It was nice to see George again. Remember from Sutton Weaver Swingbridge uh, last week or two weeks ago? I don't know. Anyway, life jackets are on. We've got 10 miles till we get to Eastern Lock and we've been joined by Stuart, who's the experience that we're going to need to get us to Liverpool. cheese sandwiches are out and we're just under halfway between Marsh Lock where we left the Weaver navigation and Eastern Lock where, it's, where we're going to drop down onto the River Mersey. You see that little narrow bit? It's 
a bit weird. Stuart was just telling me. It's a bit shy, can you tell? Try to imagine 17,000 people all working to create and dig the Manchester Ship Canal. It all happened over 130 years ago, and they dug out over 41 million square metres of soil, sand and rock, using nothing except hand tools and steam engines. Most of the excavated material was used to build the embankment that now separates the canal from the River Mersey, and it's literally just a few feet over to our starboard side. Every now and then, the navvies would hit areas of solid rock, and they had to use explosives to break it up and channel through. Just here by Inns Marshes, you can see a narrowing in the canal and piles of rock on the embankment, and they were blown out during its construction. It's rumoured that some of the leftover explosives are still up there, just under that little brick house on the embankment. We're just over halfway towards Eastham Lock. We've been on the ship canal for about an hour and it's really starting to build up. You can see the industry at the side of the ship canal. This is Stanlow. If you live in the UK, you might remember this. It brings back memories for me of the fuel blockades. You remember when there was all the petrol shortages quite a few years ago? And it's a big petrol and chemical refinery. It's actually on two sides of the canal. Part of it is on the island between the ship canal and the River Mersey. And there's a series of tunnels that link them together. And it's amazing when you pass by the ships just how big these things are. Just on our port side is the National Waterways Museum and it's at the end of the Shropshire Union Canal. And it's a pity that we haven't been there yet because it's supposed to be a good place. You never know, one day. But you might just see that lighthouse and it's like, why do you need a lighthouse at the end of the Shropshire Union Canal and onto the Manchester Ship Canal? Well, believe it or not, that lighthouse was there way before the Manchester Ship Canal was even built. And traffic used to come down the Shropshire Union Canal and it used to come straight onto the River Mersey, hence the need for a lighthouse. You might be able to tell by the shine on my forehead that I'm getting a little bit anxious. And we're just coming up to Eastham Locks and this is where we're gonna drop from the Manchester Ship Canal down onto the River Mersey. And the tide's coming in. So we're gonna be fighting the incoming tide all the way to Liverpool. Now, it's not the situation that stresses me. If you've seen our Tidal Thames and Ribble Link videos, you'll know that I do get a bit anxious. I don't think it's the situation, I think it's the loss of control and I don't know whether it's my ASD or whether it's something that a lot of people suffer from. When you're not in control of a situation, it does become a little bit stressful. The lock is gonna drop about five meters onto the incoming tide of the River Mersey. And we're gonna be fighting the incoming tide all the way into Liverpool. So it's gonna take a while for us to get there, very slow and steady. Eastham Lock is the biggest of all the locks on the Manchester Ship Canal. It comes in at a whopping 600 feet long and 80 feet wide. We could fit about 120 silver foxes in this one lock. Today though, it's just us and Laura Maisie and we're going to be falling about 5 metres or so to bring us level with the Tidal River Mersey. Because of the depth of the lock, we've had to extend us lines to about 45 feet and the lock keeper is going to watch over us as the water falls away to make sure we're safe. When the lock gate opens, we're going to wait a few moments because the water that comes out of the lock mixes with the incoming tide and it disturbs the water so we're going to let that settle for a moment before we head out to the Mersey Estuary. We're all 
all gonna die. We're all gonna die. <laughs> So we're out of Eastern Lock and we're on the River Mersey. This is huge! It's two and a half miles wide at this point. We're about 50 feet away from the banking on this side and over there, two and a half miles away, we can see some houses, we can see some industrial buildings and we can actually see John Lennon Airport, we can see an aeroplane and the control tower and it doesn't look like it's two and a half miles away, it looks a lot closer than that. The big clue is if you look behind my left shoulder though and you can see Liverpool in the distance. It's actually not as bad as I was expecting. I was reading the shipping forecast yesterday and it was warning of a half metre chop down here and the advice was to not go out on a narrow boat if it's force three or above and it was supposed to be force four today and definitely don't go if the wind is the opposite to the tide and it was we've got a southeasterly wind and the tide's coming in from the northwest i was having kittens last night but it's actually pretty decent conditions We're getting closer to Liverpool, it's on our starboard side. You probably see it just over my left shoulder. On our port side, you can see all the tanker units stored up there. It's 300,000 gallons of oil in those and they can be pumped by pipeline down to Stanlow when they need some more. If you look just behind, you can see a big shed. That's where Camel Led Shipyard is. You remember me talking about that? It's where the Daniel Adamson was built and launched. And just out there is the very famous boat, the Sir David Attenborough. You remember the one on the news? It was nearly called Boaty McBoatface. You know, I was really stressing about today. There was a couple of times we were going to cancel and go back up the Anderton boat lift and down the Trent and Mersey Canal. And by some strange coincidence, Saltersford Lock, which was between where we were moored at Sutton Weaver and the Anderton boat lift, was closed a couple of days ago, just when I started to panic about this trip. Maybe it was a sign that we had to do it. And do you know what? I'm glad that we did because we couldn't have wished for better conditions. Clear, more or less clear blue skies. We've got really light winds. There's hardly any chop on the water at all. It's so smooth. It's been a really nice journey. We can just see Brunswick Lock. It's about a mile away and we've just been in touch with them and we can get in the lock to go up into the docks in about half an hour. Five to three they've told us and it's 25 past two now. The water got a bit disturbed then when we were crossing from one side to this side and that's because the tide is at its strongest in the centre here. Now we're back in the sheltered part on this side, it's actually calmed down a lot. And we're just coming up to Brunswick Lock. You can just see it just over my left shoulder. That's going to take us into Liverpool docks and then we've got about another mile before we get to Salthouse Dock where we're going to moor. Now Brunswick Lock is a bit special and we've been in one in the last two years that looks a bit like this. See if you can remember which one it was.
The pedestrian bridge is part of the lock mechanism, so it has to open before the lock gates can open, just in case any high-mastered boats come through. We're way small enough to get under here today. Now Brunswick Lock takes us off the River Mersey and up to Brunswick Dock, and that connects to other docks that form part of the Port of Liverpool. The lock gates work in the same way as those at Limehouse Lock off the Tidal River Thames in London, do you remember that? And instead of having ground and gate paddles, the gates are hydraulically open just enough to let water in and out. Today there's only a couple of feet difference here, so it's not too dramatic like it was in London. And within a few minutes we're on our way out and into Brunswick Dock. The Port of Liverpool has over 20 enclosed docks stretching from here at Brunswick Dock about 7 miles up to Seaforth Dock and that's not far from Crosby Beach. Most of the docks have closed since the height of the Industrial Revolution, but a lot of redevelopments have taken place over recent years, especially on the southern section between here and Albert Dock, and that's now one of the busiest tourist spots in Liverpool. If you want more information of the history of the docks, check out the Merseyside Maritime Museum at Albert Dock. It's got loads of exhibits and information. And we're here. And a big thanks to Stuart. Stuart came highly recommended by quite a few people. <laughs> and uh, I mean, you don't need a pilot to cross the Mersey, do you? But why is it important? Uh, it's not mandatory, uh, but it is helpful. And I think it puts uh, canal boat owners' uh, minds at, ri at rest uh, coming across. Uh, it can be a stroppy river. Uh, you, you're negotiating the River Mersey at high water when the big boys are out um, and the tugs are around. Uh, so you have to be careful, uh, it will certainly launch all your valuables off the shelf in the saloon at, uh, at a moment's notice. Uh, it, it, it's important to get it right uh, and uh, the insurance company will really like that. Company. Yeah, yeah. This, so, yeah. Uh, I've been doing it several years now, I started just before I retired which is, um, gosh, 11 years ago, heck. <laughs> you retired 11 years ago? Yes. And when did you start working on it? Uh, I started as a pilot in the port as an apprentice in 1960. Wow. I can barely say 1960. <laughs> and uh, um, I became a licensed pilot in 1968. I think, I mean, I was stressing out. You know I was stressing out. This poor man has been on the receiving end of my phone and text messages for the last couple of weeks. You've got over, well, 60 years experience of this river. Do you think today's crossing was, was an easy one? I think it was pretty smooth. Uh, pretty straightforward, pretty straightforward. What was interesting was, I. I I probably overdid it when I, I introduced you to the rules, and that's deliberate, so that you you know you couldn't say to me, you didn't tell me this was going to be this bad. I wanted <laughs> to make sure you had the full picture as far as uh, as you can in a short period of time, and it was it was all that. It was really nice, uh, and uh, you when I've gone, you'll be saying. That was actually really good, enjoyed that. I've already that, said that, haven't I? That, <laughs> I was on the roof saying that, that was easy. That's really important that you, you run across from the Ship Canal, across the famous river, yeah. into the equally famous uh, port, you enjoyed it. Fine, we scored. So Not one, bad. one problem, we picked you up at Sutton Weaver mm -hmm. and now we're about 18 miles away in Liverpool. <laughs> well we're staying for a week and we haven't got a spare bed, where are you going? Uh, I walk up the short distance of James Street Station, get the train to Chester, Chester to Frodsham, taxi from Rogers back to my car. We better sort him out some train fare then, didn't we? <laughs> Come on then. <laughs> it's a bit Blowy Maud. <laughs> We're here at Yay! Salt House Dock in Liverpool. Wow. Again. That was a quick journey. We actually penciled in seven hours to get here. Yes. So we thought we'd get here about half past five, but we got here at just before half past three. Five hours, people. Awesome. Which is pretty good. And the crossing, I mean, easy. We couldn't have wished for better conditions or better weather. It was lovely and smooth. We were fighting the tide, but it was only a little tide. Yeah, it so was pretty, pretty easy. Yeah, it wasn't that much of a problem. There was a little bit of roughiness as we were crossing, coming across to Brunswick Lock. Yeah. But that's only because the wind was hitting the tide, so it causes a bit of fluff in the a water. Bit, a little bit of a wave. The water were getting fluffed up. Uh, 
But we got here all right. I think we saved some time because Eastern Lock and Brunswick Lock were empty and waiting for us. Yeah. Now, sometimes you have to queue for them, so just remember that if ever you do it, you might have to wait. And we, it's not a queue of narrowboats, it's a queue of bigger ships. Big macker ships. But we were lucky and we've come straight in and we're back here near enough. Two years. Yeah, two years to the day that we were last here. And we do love it. We like a bit of city life every now and then. Yeah. We do like it nice and calm and peaceful, but we do like a bit of city life. And then try and get out again. <laughs> yeah. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Because uh, there's a few ways out. We could go back out over the Mersey, or we could go out via the Liverpool link like we did the first time. Yeah. So you'll have to wait and see. You will. In the meantime, I fancy a bit of water sports. No. <laughs> Filth. We might show you a bit of that next week. It is getting windy, isn't it? It is. I think this pontoon might fly, fly away, like, what's the name in that film? You're babbling, aren't you? No, there's a film, there's a film, and Judy Garland plays this thing where she kills this woman and then sets off with a gang of other people to kill some more. I have no Wizard idea. Wizard of Oz, that's it. <laughs> she does, doesn't Jesus she? Jesus Christ. Uh, That's not Judy Garland. It is. Is it? Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. Where she clicks her shoes together and kills people. Oh, God. She drops her house on a witch, doesn't she? On a woman. I can't remember. Yeah, anyway. That's it for this week. <laughs> uh, we hope you've enjoyed Fairy Across the Mersey. Fairy Across the Mersey. <laughs> if you haven't you're not already please subscribe to the channel it is free hit the thumbs up button and then if you hit the notifications bell YouTube will let you know every time we release a new video which is Friday at four o'clock yeah share it with your friends and family on social media or posters on lamp posts we really don't <laughs> care how you do it posters on lamp posts. yeah and if you really want to help us you can help support the channel by becoming a YouTube member there's a link up above Sean's head watch out for it and you'll get some free perks and exclusives and things like that. <laughs> this sun's going to our head, isn't it? We burnt to a crisp. We're going a bit daft. Even though we've put loads of sun cream on. I can smell fish and chips. Over there. Right. See you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs>How many times have I said that? 155. And I still can't get it right. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs>